hey homies, this is actually a separate intro that I had to record after the fact for this episode. Um, in a little bit after the normal intro, I tell Ashley about a young man that went missing in Kentucky over the weekend, trying to spread awareness to anybody that might be listening out in Kentucky, the Louisville area. Um, at the time that we recorded this episode, he was still missing, his car was still missing, and unfortunately, they did find his car, and then today, the day before the episode airs, they did find his body. He did not make it. Um, I will give a better update about that in the next episode, but in case anyone had seen our posts on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, because I shared it on all our social media, um, unfortunately that has come to a conclusion, but my thoughts and prayers go out to Travis Haley and his friends and family. Thank you. Hey homies, this is Sarah. And this is Ashley. And this is Hometown Homicide. COVID. Take two. <laughs> Shit. COVID edition. Part two. Take 75. This has, been, this has been rough. Uh, it's my turn to have COVID this go around, so, you know, yay me. She doesn't have it right now. She's passed the CDC guidelines, whatever. All the restrictions yes. and bullshit. Otherwise, she would not be in the same room as me. Right. I, I'm, I am free to roam about the cabin, but... Then the mic was doing a whole thing, and we thought Ashley was dead. I don't know. It was a so lot. So, we're down to one mic because apparently with two mics, it just, it's not working. A long story. But now, with one mic, I had it all, all to myself, and you could not hear me, but Sarah had it, and you could hear her, and I'm like, I... I was scared. I was like, oh my God, I'm dead. Like, I didn't make, I got an accident. I died, and this is not real. But she figured it out. Figured something out. It was weird, though. Like, sh we would both talk, and you could barely hear her. We recorded just her testing out the mic. You could barely hear her. You recorded me just testing the mic, and you could hear me just fine. So, I don't know. We I, At this point, I don't know what's real and what's not anymore. <laughs> I watched the Netflix show, The Woman Across the Hall. The Woman in the Window. Nope. Yeah. Woman Across the Street in the Window. I don't know. Some fucking thing like that. The Woman Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. Maybe. Sure. All them words. Anyways, and I, he didn't know what was real, what wasn't. And then also my neighbor, rest in peace, passed away yesterday. We knew it was coming for a while, but we had many talks and... I always, you know, told him, like, if you do, do die in the apartment, which was Sarah's old apartment. What's up? And Casey's. To haunt his apartment, not mine. But, Jason, if you were here, please stop for the moment. I mean, maybe he made friends with Ned. I don't, I don't know. know, but that was weird. It was very weird. And now... Panic was ensuing. <laughs> very much. Very much so. Uh. But we had some news before oh. we got into this the episode. Story, yes. Um, on the off chance that any of our Kentucky homies are listening, there is a young man named Travis Haley who is missing. Um, he lives in Louisville, Kentucky. He was last seen on Thursday. He left to go to work and has not been seen since. And I checked just a little bit ago and there's still not been any sign of him. I guess there was maybe some ice, like an ice storm that night. Um, and no one's seen him or his car. He drives a silver Toyota Corolla, maybe, judging by the body style, um, <clears throat> with some slight damage on the front driver's side bumper. He's 5'8", 125 pounds, and uh, his family very much hopes to see him safe and sound. 
So if you can share this, we shared it on our Facebook page, but if you want to share this or talk to your friends at least about it, bring it up, keep your eye out for him. It would be great. We did add a new tier to the to the Patreon. If you could just sign up for a dollar if you want, you get the the episodes a day early. But just to help us out a little bit, and if you're impatient like I am, you know, just a dollar. Well, there's an option for you. The chill, the chill homies. The chill homies. I wanted to call the chill ass homies, but I was like, nah, I'll just keep it chill. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, I'll get into my story for this week. All right. Forgive me. I forgot to turn this into a potafa, so I'm going to have to flip back and forth through stuff. So, okay. You forgot to do what? Did you not listen to anything that's morbid? <laughs> when they do their listener tales and they instead of a PDF, they oh, call it a PDFA. I, yeah. My I, apologies. I mean, I do listen to it. I know you do. Apparently, I don't catch certain things because I might not be alive. So. <laughs> Pedophiles are beyond ghosts. Okay. Cool. No, I did not turn it into a thing and send it to my, what you call it. I know what I mean. Tablet? Yeah, that. That thing. Anyway. On September 22nd, 1988, a beautiful, healthy baby girl named Anita was born. She was soon taken in by Gordon and Sharon Knudsen. Gordon and Sharon brought home a baby boy, Daniel, and another baby girl, Anna, soon after Anita's arrival. Growing up so close in age... Like, I, I think they were only maybe three years apart from Anita to Anna. Um, made it really easy for them to have a tight relationship with one another. And Anna really looked up to her big sister. There's a quote from Anna saying, When we were really little, we always had matching outfits, which was really fun. Every single thing my sister did, I wanted to do it. It just sounds like cute, you know, big sister, little sister. Um, By all accounts, Anita was sweet, fun-loving, outgoing, and would stick up for an underdog or someone getting picked on. Uh, She even took on the principal of her high school one time. He had sent a... And I don't know if it said it was for sure a male principal, but it seemed like it was a male principal type thing to do. Sent a a female student home for violating dress code. (laughs) You know, one of them things. (laughs) That, they tried to do that to me in high school. (laughs) I wasn't showing anything. My shirt had a very tiny Hooters, because I got it from Hooters, Uh but like, the logo was like, you had to stare at my chest, which yes, I had a bigger chest in high school. And... (laughs) They told me it was inappropriate and I needed to go home or put a different shirt on. I'm like, why are you staring at my tits? Yeah, I mean, yeah. But anyways. You could have turned it inside out. Not that I'm advocating for it. I think I did. It, but, you know. I think I did. Um, I never... Like, you could barely see that said Hooters. Yeah. It was such tiny writing, which... Apparently they did. And I mean, the logo was owls. I mean, we all know what it's getting at, but like... It wasn't even that. It just said Hooters. And it was like small print underneath the big print. Like, it was a... Oh, that's yeah. extra so like, dumb. That's why I said, you have to be staring at my tits uh, to see that. Excuse me. Yeah, that's dumb. Anyways, this isn't a <laughs> podcast about tits. It could be. Titties. Titties. Only fans. Um... <laughs> I kid. We can see if that handle's open, though. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Which one? Oh, no, that was my podcast. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Anyway. Anyway. Sorry. Uh, where am I? Oh, okay. So, he, presumably a he, sent a female student home for violating dress code. And Anita didn't believe that he was correct on it. She found and studied the rules in the handbook about dress code and brought it up to the principal, uh, saying he was wrong and should apologize to the student. Um, I guess every day after that, she would pop her head in the office and be like, have you apologized yet? Oh, wow. Yeah, like... Uh, enough to be persistent and a thorn in your side, but not to like, you know, ruffle feathers. And uh, apparently, 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 I'm having a stroke. Um, 
uh, her persistence did pay off, and eventually he did apologize. But good. That's kind of a just a neat little story. Like she wants things to be right, and if they're not, to be made right. You know. Um, a fun, kind problem solver of a person that wants to give everyone their fair turn sounds like a perfect person to be a teacher, which is what Anita wanted to do. She enrolled in the elementary education program at Minot State University in Minot, North Dakota, which was a little over an hour drive from her tiny hometown of Butte. And to give you some perspective, Butte has under 70 population tiny tiny yes town. seven zero her high school had to be like not outsourced but you know like one of those community high schools you know of surrounding little bits and where stuff. you probably have to open and roll yeah because it was probably 20 minutes to a half hour from butte to velva which is the velva high school where she graduated from in the high school itself has about 220 students not per class no like the whole high, yeah I, when I looked it up I looked up Velva High School attendance or whatever and it said 220 enrolled Minot State University has just under 3,000 enrolled alone with Minot itself as a city coming in at over 48,000 for its recorded population. She was working two jobs to put herself through her freshman year and pay for the apartment she lived in off campus. And though the drive wasn't far, like I said, a little over an hour from Minot to home in Butte, um, cell phones definitely made it easier for the family to keep in touch. Anita's mother, Sharon, said they talked about every day on the phone, and that's why when a few days passed in early June of 2007 without Anita answering her phone or calling her mother back, it raised some concern. Monday, June 4th of 2007, Anita's father, Gordon, made the drive up to Minot to Anita's apartment. He could see her car parked outside the complex, clearly implying that she would be home. But many knocks on the door went unanswered. So Gordon went and found the um, apartment complex manager and asked to be let in. She tried to refuse at first, stating that she'd get into trouble. Uh, I mean, logically also, I could imagine maybe she was the younger person and not wanting to let people in all willy-nilly. Right, and how would he prove that, like, a a man comes asking to be let into a young college girl's apartment. Yeah. Understandable. Um, But when a maintenance worker for the apartment complex comes and says he found a cut window screen with the entire thing being removed and placed like in an alcove between buildings, Gordon basically demanded that he be let in his apartment or his daughter's apartment. Um, Nothing in the apartment was strewn about or knocked over, and nothing seemed to be missing. But in the bedroom, Gordon did find Anita face down and cold on her mattress covered in a robe. Clearly, police were called in and the scene was processed. They found a, quote, cheap pocket knife on scene by her bed, believed to be the murder weapon. Anita was stabbed multiple times in the chest. Uh, The police collected DNA samples, but it's not mentioned what kind of DNA, and that it doesn't necessarily bother me. That's not the right word, but it doesn't say <clears throat> they found, you know, the killer's blood or saliva on a glass or anything like that. It just says that they collected DNA samples, and they've also stated that there's no sign of sexual assault, so right. there's not That's DNA where from my that. Sorry, and I obviously knew that. Brain so was I, going. Yep. Yeah. So. That stuck with me in because later they take samples from people. What are I wonder what they've compared it to then? Like mm-hmm. what kind of DNA, or if or if they have something and it wasn't advanced enough at the time, and they just knew to collect DNA in case, you know, like with the forethought sure. of advancement and technology and stuff. But yeah, it's just very vague. Yeah, of what they collected. Yeah. Um, So, who would have wanted to hurt Anita, as that seems to be the only motivation? You know, robbery, sexual assault, any of that doesn't seem to be the point here. It just seems like someone wanted to kill her, and 
everyone, teachers, her parents, her siblings, friends, all said that she was so liked by everyone. No one can imagine wanting to do this to her. So yeah, who would have wanted to hurt Anita? And here's a few of the top theories. These are theories. We are not accusing anyone of anything. That is not what we do here. Negative. Uh, theory number one. Maintenance man that found the screen. I mean, he's got keys. You know, I mean, that sucks as part of being a maintenance man. It just, you, you've got the ability to have access. So he did happen to be boyfriend with the apartment manager that didn't want to originally let Gordon in. Wait, he was what? He was the boyfriend of the apartment manager. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, yes. I say, uh, and I might have mumbled and I'm stuffy, so who knows. But yes, the, the maintenance man that found the screen that was cut, that had been removed from her uh, bedroom window, was boyfriend to the apartment manager at the time. Okay. So since he had keys and, you know, access. But hmm. if you have keys and did something like that, the screen because if he you know here's my thinking mm -hmm. of that theory mm -hmm. is he cut the screen and put it where he did so it looked like someone didn't have access and that was their way in and then be like oh look i found this right to point them to not make you think. a little red herring yes yes i also agree with that view of it um that was also said by one of the police detectives about it was that might have been a, a red herring type thing to throw off, you know, because, I mean, obviously the door was locked. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me you climbed in and out of the bedroom window? I mean, it would just be easier to leave through the door if you've already made your way in. Yes to me was the window out of view it when i watched the crime watch daily uh episode they did on this and in, in the different articles i looked at there were some different views of i don't know if there was a front door and a back door to each apartment or if it just was different buildings of the apartment complex that maybe different sources didn't know for sure which building it was because you could tell it was the same color and like the layout but some kind of have like a little nook that was covered by you know some overhang and some was like on a flat surface of a wall that looked more like a back door type situation so i'm not entirely sure okay that would be my only question is if they went in through the window and left through the window because her entry door to her apartment mm. would be visible for someone to see them, but the window was not. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I feel you. That's okay. very true. Also, one source, at least one source I read said that there was no blood on the screen, but then in the Crime Watch Daily that I watched, they said there was a little tiny bit of blood on the screen. So it's like things conflict all the time. Like that's not whatever, but the blood would have had to gotten there when they left. Uh, you would think. But they also could have gone through the door when they were leaving and locked it behind them. But I don't know what type of lock it was. Yeah, I don't know either. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> police did look into this maintenance man and and ruled him out uh, but you know coincidentally enough about a year after Anita's death he killed himself so there's that yeah and I mean we're not pointing fingers at anybody but obviously if he did not do it if he was innocent that's a lot to to like have weighing on you that people think you did do it yeah. or and he could have had other battles he was yep or demons he was battling is what i meant to say and you don't know why but definitely don't want to accuse i mean yeah just kind of a an odd thing 
theory-ish number two was that there was a man spotted running around, like, from the scene around the possible time of the murder. This is a, a weak theory, but it was brought up in multiple sources. A witness reported that they saw a man running, quote, like running hard, end quote. I think trying to emphasize that he wasn't, he didn't seem like he was just on a jog. Yeah, like he wasn't like just like. Like a leisurely jog. Yeah. Or um, run. Yeah. Um, the, the witness gave a description to the police and they created a sketch, um, which they released on the news. The man in question actually recognized that that was probably him that they were referencing and went in and and contacted authorities explaining that he does just indeed run and that is part of his normal route at his normal time of running. Um, I don't know if this witness was another apartment complex tenant or what the deal was, like, why they wouldn't have seen him do this same routine over and over again, you know, if he, mm-hmm. if, if they lived there, saw this guy run by every day at 6.30 in the morning, like, why would you just not know that, but it was something reported, kudos to them, especially for getting enough of a description out that the guy recognized himself, and was like, yeah, that, that's me, I should probably yeah. clear this up, so, like, cool. Um, but they investigated him and he was also cleared. And I bet he doesn't take that route. <laughs> oh shit, right. I'm gonna go over here. Really lit areas. Yeah. Uh, theory number three is her roommate. They didn't get along. It was another female, but they did not get along and it had even turned slightly physical in an argument once. Which surprises me since Anita was so loved by everyone. Like, how she could have, or like, someone would have enough of a beef with her to like get into kind of an altercation, you know? Perhaps. Perhaps. It happens when you live with someone. Like, yeah. you're with them, I don't know, all the time. And sometimes just the right person can push your crazy button. And I'm not saying anybody was crazy in this story, but I, I've, I've had people statement. push my crazy button. And I know Ashley's had people push her crazy button. So. You know, it, it, sometimes it's just the, the right lineup of stuff. But um, she had this, they never said her name, but the, the roommate had texted threatening messages to Anita. Um, according to Sharon, Anita's mom, um, Anita was scared of this girl and was planning on moving out, which I imagine when the lease was up, since this was beginning of June, right after school year ended, probably, you know, school length lease type deal. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't look good for the roommate to have those messages that she sent. And it just doesn't look good for her. But well, in 2007, we didn't. What would what would we have known too much about all of our text history and everything still being able to be brought up too, though? But still, we're not so. saying anybody did. Well, somebody did it, but we're not saying she did. We're just saying. Um, Gordon, Anita's father, said that the two had kind of patched things up, though, before the murder. I'm not sure how, but he did mention that, and I saw that in a couple of places. Um, But the roommate was spending time at her parents that weekend that this happened, and she was cleared. I mean, obviously, if you don't get along with your roommate very well, you might not spend all your time at home. Right. Um... Her mother even got into it with Sharon after Anita's funeral, upset that her daughter had been questioned by the police. What What do you think if your daughter's roommate gets fatally stabbed that your daughter, just because she wasn't at home at the time, isn't going to get questioned? Like, duh. The whole point is to question you to see mm-hmm. where your whereabouts were at that time. Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed a little bit of a overreach on the mother's part. <laughs> um, also, the roommate would have guys over. No judgment here, but um, sometimes she would also leave the apartment with a guy still there. I wouldn't do that, but that's you do. 
right everybody happening. does their own thing and maybe that's part of why Anita wasn't super comfortable I don't with the roommate but in my apartment without me here I don't trust people but that's just me right um, did did maybe somebody take a liking to Anita and they came back to you know try his luck with her or you know hit on her or whatever <clears throat> fair theory um Oh, another, not even on my list, but it was mentioned, there was a building nearby that had some um, roofing being worked on at the time, and police looked into, they think, all of the guys that were on that crew. I mean, sometimes construction is kind of a... Some days, some people show up, some days people don't, mm-hmm. depending on what size of company and stuff. But they think they talked to everybody involved with the, the roofing company that would have been there, and they didn't get anybody narrowed down out of that either. So that sucks. Um, theory number four, and it's, it's the last one that I've got, but um, was her senior prom date, Tyler Schmaltz. Tyler and Anita went to their senior prom together. Uh, He admits that he had a crush on her, but said there was nothing between the two of them and that they were just friends. But friends that ended up living in the same off-campus apartment complex for college the next year. That seemed a little bit weird to me that of all the places you could go live at and you live in the same exact apartment complex I mean it doesn't seem like it's that big of a college but I mean and I mean look we lived in the same building across the hall from each other so that's you know well that's how we met weird like it's not like I knew you before I know but we very well should have known each other before especially with dance team and everything else like I just never ventured out of myself so whatever um but um, Tyler, Tyler seems like a very nice guy. Uh, Crime Watch Daily interviewed him as well as Anita's parents and sister. Um, but this is a quote I found from him. It says, she was just so amazing. She just meant that much to me, said Tyler. Back in my first days of college, all my high school friends moved away, and she was my only friend I had then. I'm a quiet, shy guy, and I'm not that much outgoing. So at the time, she was my only friend. She was just the most amazing person in the world, and she didn't deserve any of this. So, like, you know, that, that's another thing. If... Maybe your friends are going to different colleges and stuff, and she's the only one that's kind of nearby that you're going to know. It would be nice to be by them instead of, you know. Yeah, that theory doesn't really work for me with him. I mean, I hate to say because he's a nice guy, but if it was one of his only friends, you're not going to kill one of your only friends. No, you don't know. I don't know, though. I mean, I'm not... Um, he created the Facebook page in loving memory of Anita Knudsen and also uploaded a 20 minute long tribute video to YouTube in Anita's memory. Um, DNA was collected from Tyler and his brother. His brother was his roommate at the time, but again, no charges were brought for anybody on, on any of the DNA or evidence collected. So the DNA brought up nobody. Diddly. Or what's been able to be tested so far. Anyway. I don't know. The, the one thing alluded to something that maybe that it was like too much, like too small of a sample or something found that they're, you know, we're hoping for in the future being able to do things differently and not use up the sample or whatnot. I could be reading into it too much too but it just it seemed like they were trying to say they have something to test that they might not have been able to test yet but they're getting samples for when the day comes like if that makes sense oh another it's not even necessarily a theory but her father gordon did bring up another scenario um if it maybe had something to do with a person that Anita intended on moving in with when she moved out of the apartment, like when things were really bad. Mm -hmm. I guess he asked her, quote, you're not going to move in with so-and-so. And And she said, no. 
and went on to say, I wouldn't move in there anyway because of her husband. And then her dad said, if he was hitting on her, she didn't go for that. She would have probably said she was going to tell her friend. So it, it makes it sound like she, maybe she had a friend that she was going to move in with, but her friend's husband, husband was sketchy. Out. Yeah. But then still, well, I mean, unless he did hit on her and then she was going to tell the friend and then the husband decided to kill her to prevent that. But it just seemed kind of a, a loose... That's a far fetch. Like, if nothing happened to kill someone because you made it pass, that's... Yeah, but it was the only other thing that was even brought up as an option. Um, They just don't have... And a pocket knife was used to stab her? Mm Mm-hmm. A, quote, cheap pocket knife, which surprised me that even a cheap pocket knife could hold up stabbing through the chest. Yeah. You know, that's a tough plate to go through, but... um, And then they covered her up with a robe afterwards. It was just, it was a very brief but specific crime, and there's, like, nothing to go on. It, it's just kind of, well, obviously it's bizarre, but... And then, unfortunately, a couple, a few years later, in April of 2013, her brother Daniel killed himself. Like, he was just, I guess he was not the same after... That's too bad. Her murder, yeah, and uh, caused him a lot of pain. And then their sister, Anna, the surviving sibling, said he was never the same after she died. Absolutely. It was difficult for all of us, but whoever killed my sister had a hand in also killing my brother. So she lost her two siblings. And parents had to bury two children because of that. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. And we're... How many years later? And they they still have nothing. No one's been charged. No... No resolution for them. They put a billboard up um, that was, like, funded by, you know, the public or whatever. And since the billboard has been taken down, but I guess there is a sign placard probably of some sort that's been installed and they've planted flowers and stuff just to still have something of her out there to remind people and yeah maybe so they also did that in california for Kristen smart which there's a whole podcast about that your own backyard but they billboards remind me of jody remind me of her continue i mean i guess she it just sounds like she liked to have a good time. Like, she liked to go down to the dance club. It doesn't say, like, party downtown, you know what I mean? But she liked to go out. She made friends. She met people. It didn't seem like she had anybody on a... That she'd be on their shit list besides maybe that roommate. But that's excessive to, you know, think of killing your roommate just because you don't get along. Jesus, there's easier ways to do that, so... Um, that is very, very true. I mean, if anybody, even the smallest detail, has anything they might be important to the investigation of the, you know, murder of Anita Knutson, call the Minot Police Department at 701-852-0111. It'd be nice if they could finally close that case and be able to really move on in whatever way you can. And hopefully with the small amount of DNA sample, whatever they have, hopefully can be tested because there are new, you know, with the ancestry Mm -hmm. DNA, Mm -hmm. they have access to that database that could possibly, even if the person who did it, the killing has it used ancestry.com or whatever all of them are Mm -hmm. but maybe a relative has Mm -hmm. that could come up as a partial match which could then help them point them in the right direction right because i've been seeing a lot of that happening Mm -hmm. i've been watching old datelines and they solved like a 40 some year old case 
because I had a partial DNA sample from the girl's bra strap, mm. which I don't even know how they found. I mean, obviously, they have all the testing tools to... But anyways, it, it wasn't big enough. It was too small, so like if they took the samples, it would ruin it. Mm. But they actually sent it to someone in the, that actually let them take samples without ruining it. Nice. And that's where they found... A partial match and then ended up figuring out who it was and they solved it but it can happen yeah so depending on what the sample is i hope they can test it mm-hmm. and find something i mean what tw- well i guess i forget how old we are but i was gonna say what 20 years ago they could just like type the blood they couldn't even necessarily do what's all the alleles and stuff but it's crazy how far it's mm-hmm. come mm-hmm. and what they can get from it and that this whole ancestry thing is really helping, so... Mm-hmm. Even if you just want to find out what your real ancestry is, I mean, hey, more power to you, but then you might help solve some cases. That is true. I mean, it would be weird to, like, do the ancestry thing and then be like, oh, by the way, your second cousin on your dad's side, they they murdered a few people back 20 years. You know what I mean? Like, it would be incredibly bizarre to find that out. And that would be crazy. I guess some type of reward, like that. <laughs> you know, because my DNA helped you right. close the case. A cookie? I would take a cookie. I'll take a cookie from Crumble. <laughs> Not sponsored, but please. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mm, yum. So good. Crumble cookies. Cedar Rapids. Marion? What is it? Cedar Rapids. Yeah. Mm, sponsor. Just kidding. Hashtag Eastern Iowa. Um, so, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot to that story, but it's just kind of baffling that there's no forced sign of injury besides that cut screen, which could have been staged anyway. No rape. No nothing. Just her murdered and nothing from it. That's sad. Yeah. And another one, of course, that I've never heard of. Of course, I don't really hear much from the Dakotas, so I don't know. And if you have any story that you want to share, you can email us at podcast at hometownhomicide.com. Mm-hmm. We did have something submitted there that I'm going to look into. Is that what you're going to do for next week? Maybe. And I mean, hell, if you just have other stories, ghosty stories or whatnot, because we're around here, we believe in that if you haven't gathered that by now, but (laughs) um, not to hop on the listener tales trend, but we would be more than willing to share some submitted stories every once in a while. Absolutely. It's, It's interesting to hear other people's experiences with either true crime experiences or otherwise. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Hometown Homicide Podcast and Twitter at Ope Murder. That is Ope, O-P-E, Murder, M-U-R-D-E-R. Rate us on Apple, Spotify, and, and Good, Good Pod. Pods, please, and thank you, if you would. And be honest about it. We want to hear the honest opinions. And, and you know, we're gonna troubleshoot this whole microphone business once I am not dying anymore and whatnot. Mm. Yes, and uh, thank you to uh, Dude Who Listens for the great rating on Apple. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. It's a very nice hat you have on there, Sarah. It is a very nice hat. Yes. Sample merch came in the other day. We're only at, what, 37, 36 people on Goo? Nope on YouTube subscribers and we've said at 100 we'll give away some sort of wearable merch yes all you have to do is go to one of our videos and comment that you have subscribed some have told us via Twitter via Facebook that's great as well but just so that we know to include you um, for the first 100 and we'll do other ones for other milestones as well so everyone has more chances but yes we are up to 37 Yay. And that is Hometown Homicide Podcast on YouTube. Kentucky homies, like I said, keep your eye out for Travis and his silver, I think, Corolla. Um, Hopefully he comes home safe and sound. And again, thank you for everyone who has listened and stayed with us through all of our ups and downs of technical issues. We appreciate it. We will get to the point where we won't have that, hopefully. Knock on wood. Everyone has it. We get it. Mm -hmm. And it does not affect our storytelling. 
And we want to tell stories that are to you and not about you. So stay safe. And this was Hometown Homicide.